if you're lucky enough to be able to charge from home, which is roughly 50 to 55% of UK households apparently, then it is considerably cheaper to do that, to fuel that car than it is a petrol or diesel car, if you're on the right tariff anyway. But what about out there on the public charging network? If you pick the best case scenario from house charging, and then the worst case scenario from rapid charging at a service area, at a, a big charging hub, for example, then you could be looking at a difference of 10 times, 10 times more expensive to charge out there than in here. Now, it's going to be more expensive on the public charging network for reasons I'll come to in a minute, but ultimately, there is a massive gap. There's a massive gulf between this advantage and using that. Now, if you can't charge at home, you would use the destination charger more than the rapid charger, which is something else I'll mention later on in the video. But ultimately, if you do have to use a rapid charger, how much does it cost now? I've made a list of the main rapid charging networks to see how expensive they actually are. Here we are, the prices and the comparison between petrol or diesel fueling and electric car fueling. This is not a comparison in terms of running costs, this is purely about fuel costs. So that's what this is for on the whiteboard of truth, of course. And here are the prices for the networks, which I'll come to in a minute. So let me explain this one briefly. A combustion engine vehicle, which apparently the average efficiency is 50 miles per gallon, um, according to, well, many sources. So if the car does 50 miles per gallon and today's average fuel price, which is a combination of petrol and diesel according to the RAC, is £1.45 per litre. That means that in terms of fuel alone, you'll be paying 13.2 pence per mile for, well, your fuel. And with an electric vehicle, so let's flip this around now. Again, using an, using an average of 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, um, and a target of 13.2 pence per mile, that means that if it's more expensive to charge than 46.2 pence per kilowatt hour on whatever network you use, then it's more expensive than the average petrol slash diesel refuel, if that makes sense. Now, I have to be very clear on this one. This is not what you would use if you couldn't charge from home. This is rapid charging network. Think of it as the equivalent to putting petrol or diesel in at a services, which is obviously gonna be a lot more expensive than that. So this is what you would do on a long journey when you wanted to get it as fast as possible and carry on. If you couldn't charge from home, ideally anyway, but not always, you would use the destination charging network, the AC chargers, which are between seven and 22 kilowatts, typically. Now they are about 20 to 30% cheaper on average than the rapid chargers. So if you went to work or a supermarket or a shopping center for a few hours and use their destination chargers, then that is ultimately what it would cost you. So it's not this, this isn't what it will cost you if you can't charge from home. This is part of that mix, but it would be cheaper than this. These are the rapid charging networks, the, the, the main ones, if you will, that I've used. Um, so there, there are some missing off this one, but it would be down here if we picked every single one of them. So these are, these are the main ones for me, the bigger ones and the prices are a little bit odd for some of them. And again, just to be clear, this is the guest access or the contactless price that you can get from these networks if contactless is available. So some of these like BP Pulse, for example, if you use their app, it's cheaper than using contactless. And that's you know for, for several of these networks actually. Some of them also have a subscription like BP Pulse and FastNed as I call it. Um, so if you're a heavy user of them, you can pay something like nine, 10 pounds a month and it makes the charging cheaper. So these prices are all what everyone can access. If someone's coming from abroad and they just want a contactless it or app if you have to, then that's the price. So I'm not saying that some of these can't be cheaper. The Tesla Supercharger Network, for example, is for non-Teslas only. If you own a Tesla on the Tesla Supercharger Network, then again, you're probably knocking about 10, 15 pence per kilowatt hour or even more from that. And let me just briefly explain Charge Place Scotland, NAFC, not a fudging clue, because ultimately it's not a network like Teslas and Ionities where it's their charge points everywhere that they've installed and look after. 
It's more of a administration network is charged by Scotland, which is why when you look at their pricing, it's just this over and over again. And there are three pages of it because a lot of council charges are in there. A lot of private charges, I guess, are in there where essentially they're picking their own prices. It's not set by the, the Scottish network. So therefore, I can't give you a price. The, 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 there's like 200 of them. OK, so let's start with this. The, t the top one, Tesla. The reason why it's 30 to 65 pence per kilowatt hour, which puts it on both sides of is it cheaper or not, is because Tesla have a time of day variation. So let me put this picture up. If you charge during peak times, it could be 65p. If you charge uh, two in the morning when it's at the cheapest in terms of wholesale price of electricity, then it could be 30 pence. The location also varies between different Tesla superchargers. And at the moment, it's roughly 50% of them that are open to non-Teslas. I expect that to grow as time goes on. Um, so this clearly, as you can see here, is by far the cheapest network to use. Even at peak rate, it's pretty much the cheapest, especially when you consider that Podpoint, which is second, is kind of supermarket subsidized, I imagine, as in the supermarkets are deciding the uh, uh, pence per kilowatt hour rather than Podpoint. It shows what can be done. I think that's what I have a take on when I look at all this. Remember, these are not charities. Companies have to make money. They have to be sustainable. And the fact that the prices are all in a similar sort of level would suggest that that's a sustainable level. They're not taking the mick. The wholesale price of electricity doesn't necessarily dictate the price of this, especially if they fixed it a year or two ago. There's all sorts of variables. So don't look at what you, we pay at home or the wholesale price of electricity doing that over the last 12 months and think, oh, why is this not doing this? Tesla, for me, is an, an edge case. They have significant advantages. They make their own charges, as far as I'm aware. They have a worldwide network. So economies of scale must dictate that they can do this at a cheaper rate. You know, they're, they're a big company that possibly even subsidize it from the car manufacturing, I'm not sure. For me, a little bit of a, an edge case in the fact that it's probably more supermarket pricing than anything else, which is what a lot of this is. If I put the price of services, petrol, diesel costs, that would be significantly higher, and so would that, and so would that. So what a lot of people make the mistake of doing, especially other channels and the mainstream media, is look at the worst case scenario for rapid charging, the cheapest scenario for petrol or diesel, supermarkets, and then go, well, look at the difference. If you use the services petrol price, it would be a lot closer. So let's go down the list briefly. Fast Ned, as I like to call them, 69 pence per kilo hour. They're, uh, I think, originally from Holland and uh, meant to be very reliable, very fast, a good network to use. Uh, Ionity, 74p. Remember years ago, they started at 69 pence when everyone else was at 35, 40p. The fact that they've barely gone up from that original price, I guess, is a good thing. But this is another thing that's worth mentioning. Ionity, if you've got certain brands of car, like a, a Kia, for example, you buy a brand new Kia, as far as I'm aware, you get access to Kia's Ionity package because this is built by the manufacturers. So any manufacturer that's kind of bought into Ionity means that they can charge a lot cheaper, at least in the first year or two or three years of owning that brand new car. So that wouldn't be 74p for certain cars that you buy brand new. It would be, well, considerably less. There's, there's many variables, but again, this is worst case scenario, sort of. Apple Green, 77p, and then you've got a lot of 79p from MFG, Osprey, and GridServe. GridServe are an important one because they essentially have the near monopoly on the service areas in England. And yeah, when you look at the difference between that and something like Tesla, that's I think what makes people go, whoa, hang on a minute here. B Peoples, 79 to 85p. Now, they're quite complicated to B Peoples. And if you look at the reviews, from various large magazines, one of the most unreliable. Considering they must be one of the best funded, that's very strange. However, their pricing is based on the speed of the charger being used. So if you're using a 50 kilowatt charger, 79p, if you're using a 350 kilowatt charger, then um, 85p. So I don't know how charge networks operate in terms of buying electricity. I'm, I'm not in this field. However, in terms of commercial electricity, in terms of like if you had a factory or something, you don't just pay for what you use. 
you know, per kilowatt hour like you do at home, you also pay an availability charge. So if in a, let's say a factory, and you have 300 kilowatts as your maximum peak, that's the most we will use at any one time, then you have to pay an availability of 300 kilowatts. If you suddenly get a, a machine in that uses 500 kilowatts, even if you only run it for five minutes, then you have to pay a higher availability cost because you, you, you're wanting up to 500 now instead of 300. So maybe that's the justification for BP Pulse in terms of will we charge you more for the higher powered stuff, even if you can't do it because we have to pay more for the electricity costs, the availability costs for that site. Whether it's justified or not, I'll leave it up to you. The fact that everybody else seems to have a flat rate in terms of the speed it gives you suggests that maybe that ain't the best way of doing it. Shell at 74 to 93 <laughs> pence. It depends on the location for a lot of these as well, which is why there's a there's a variation with some of them. I prefer the networks that just have a flat rate because that makes the most sense to me. But yeah, can you imagine paying 93 pence? I mean, that's over double the cost of petrol and diesel. So a genie point, I've used these quite a bit because uh, they're in Clacton on Sea, uh, which is where my parents live. And ultimately that's the rapid chargers. They've got one near the Premier Inn, which is great because it's in the car park for convenience, but 83 pence. When you're used to paying Tesla prices in my Tesla, that's noticeable. Uh, Instavolt, 85p, although I believe they've just sent me an email saying that they're bringing nighttime cheaper rate. Similar to Tesla, but it's only about 82p, I think, 83 pence. Instavolt for me are a good reliable network, but 85p, 69p for them, 74p for Ionity, which I would say is no worse than Instavolt in terms of reliability. And then I always come back again to Tesla. They've got significant advantages, of course, in terms of, like I said, the worldwide network as opposed to just a, a UK one, but forgetting the price, that's the gold standard. It's proof that it can be done. Now, let me mention why rapid charging is significantly more expensive than destination charging, which again is about 50 odd pence per kilowatt hour on average. So it's still a lot more expensive than home, but rapid chargers are very expensive to buy and install. You're probably looking at 20, 30,000 pounds per rapid charger to install one. Whereas uh, even a 22 kilowatt AC charger, a destination one, where you would typically use your own cable, one to 2,000 pound maybe installed. It will obviously vary with the install costs, but ultimately you could probably fit about 10 or more fast destination chargers as opposed to one single rapid. So there is a significant, there is, there is a significant reason why this is a lot more expensive than your house, which the price cap I think is about 22, 23 pence per kilowatt hour at the moment. Whether it's down here or up here, I don't know. But again, these are charities, they have to make money. I cannot believe that these are taking the mick. They're basically going, well, we have to charge that much. Gridsurf, for example, have got all the plumb places, the service areas, and they're still having to charge 79 pence. If you've put millions of pounds into installing chargers, you wanna get that back, don't you? If this was your company, you wouldn't be a charity sort of, well, let's give it as cheap as possible and make, you know, make it non-profit. It just doesn't exist. Now, I think it's probably worth looking at the best case scenario. So this is how much I pay on my car. So because I almost exclusively charge mine at night, I pay seven pence per kilowatt hour. I also don't do 3.5, the average in the Tesla, and certainly not in the Mi, that's a very efficient car. I'm averaging four miles per kilowatt hour. 1.75 pence per mile. That's why I've had electric vehicles for the last nine years. More than 10 times more expensive for me to get a combustion engine vehicle. And given the fact I do over 25,000 miles a year, that is a significant saving. And it also shows the growing kind of gulf between those that can charge at home and those that can't charge at home. Again, it's roughly 50, 50 to 55 percent of UK households can charge at home or have the ability to charge from home. The rapid charging network is considerably more expensive than petrol and diesel. The destination charging network, if I look at an average of 50 odd pence per kilowatt hour, it is still more expensive than petrol and diesel. It's not a problem if you can charge from home because you won't use it often enough. 
if you can't charge from home, not much of an incentive to get an EV, is there? And I've always said for the last eight, nine years of doing this channel, if I couldn't charge from home, I wouldn't yet have an EV. Mainly because there's not enough chargers anywhere near me to actually make it usable. But the price is what initially drew me in all those years ago, back in 2015, I could save a ton on the many miles I do. So there we have it. Thank you ever so much for watching for 99p a month, which is better value than any of these. Um, you can become a member. So you get members only videos. You also get the videos like this on a Sunday instead of Friday. And you help the channel out. If you want to help the channel out another way, just like, subscribe, put a comment in. That's the best way of doing it. So thanks for watching. See you soon.